What is going on guys, it's Yoji. The upcoming Path of Exile expansion has been announced and it is called Ascendancy. This expansion will come out in early 2016. So this comes after the Talisman League which has been announced last week. And let me tell you, I am so hyped for this. My hype train went complete overdrive, flew into the sun and hype exploded in a hype explosion of hyped hypeness. But I am also a little bit scared. Simply because there will be so many changes to the game. So let's have a look at what has been revealed so far, shall we? Let's kick things off with the 19 new subclasses. Each class gets 3 subclasses to choose from. Except for the Scion, who only gets 1. Now, I know people tend to overhype new content and get overly excited about these kind of things. So let me give you my completely unbiased, objective, very conservative and non-exaggerated assessment of the classes announced so far. They are bonkers, batshit, insane, crazy! Duelists can be a slayer. Slayers can get melee splash as a skill node, stun everything and be a leech tank. Or become a gladiator. Gladiators can cause bleed explosions or block everything. I mean, 100% block chance to spell block? What? Also a bleed and charge generation. As third class for duelists we have the champion, a taunting group buffing tank. Oh, and do you like fortify? Even if not playing melee, you have fortify. For shadows we have assassins. Assassins basically always crit and for massive damage, always. Also damage over time effects, all of them. And if that is too blunt for you, shadows can also become a saboteur. Every trapper's, and I guess miners, wet dream. Cooldown reduction for traps, what? One trap triggering multiple traps at the same time? Also blinded smoke stuff, oh and double mines! For the witch we know only the necromancer. Flash and bone offering affect you as well as your minions. 100% increased spectre damage and life? What? Zombies become even crazier meat shields? Chaos damage for minions? Aura buffs? Templars can become Inquisitors. Things with Consecrated Ground, maybe healer builds incoming? Crits ignore elemental resists? What? Also, cast on crit anyone? Rangers can choose Deadeye. To get Pierce Chance added as crit chance. Gain an extra chain or an extra arrow and AoE? We can also get Far Shot? Or you choose Raider to become Onslaught, become Frenzy or become Phasing. And finally, the Marauder who can be a Juggernaut even more than before. Double armor bonus from body armors, 1000 flat accuracy bonus and reduced elemental damage taken per endurance charge? So far these are all the subclasses we know. And before anyone complains about power creep, this is not power creep. Nothing here is creeping up on you. This is power straight to your face. But as I know GGG with our characters becoming that much stronger, the game will also become that much harder. And now you are probably wondering, how do I get these subclasses? So, throughout each difficulty, so-called Trials of Ascendancy can be randomly found. Those seem to be trap-ridden mini-puzzle dungeons. You have to get through in order to complete them. I imagine them to be spawning randomly like Haku's Master Mission Dungeon Zones. And once you complete all six different trials for a difficulty, you may enter the Lord's Labyrinth in that difficulty. Remember that big statue in the Sun encampment in Act 3? That one will be the entrance to the Labyrinth. In the labyrinth you will encounter combinations of the traps you already know from the different trials. You have to overcome these puzzles to access keys and open locked doors, uncover hidden passages and secret rooms. The dungeon will change every day and there will be daily racing leaderboards for the labyrinth. During each run through the labyrinth you will also encounter Itzaro as a boss fight three times. Each of the three fights will have different mechanics every single time, such as statues granting him buffs or powerful ads spawning to his aid. The mechanics of the fights can also change depending on your actions in the labyrinth and your success or failures during the previous boss fights. Upon completing the labyrinth in one difficulty, you earn two points that you can spend on the subclass passive tree. This means you can earn a total of six of those so-called ascendancy points in total per character. But wait, there's more. Upon completing each run through the labyrinth in each difficulty, you also gain access to enchantments that allow you to randomly craft one of several new implicit mods on gloves, boots and helmets. You gain access to the glove enchantments upon completing the normal labyrinth, which will grant implicits that trigger spell-like effects. Upon completing cruel labyrinth you get access to boot enchantments, which grant a conditional combat bonus. And you also gain access to higher tier of glove enchantments. 
From Merciless Labyrinth you gain access to helmet enchantments, which enhance existing skills. The Discharge one, which has been spoiled, looks ridiculously strong. Also, in Merciless you unlock the highest tier of glove and boot enchantments. Each time you complete a Labyrinth run you can randomly roll a mod on one of your items. This will replace any previous enchantments. That means you will want to run the Labyrinth a lot to get the perfect enchantments for your specific character build. Especially since these implicits can also be put on uniques. GGG also revealed three of many uniques coming with the expansion, but it is very hard to estimate their power level with so many upcoming changes. They do look very interesting though. A maze with a slow aura, an abyssal cry chaos explosion wand, and a siege ballista enhancing bow. More of the subclasses as well as new skills and content will be revealed soon. Now let me also give you a few words of concern here. All of this looks extremely powerful and seems very hard to balance properly. Also the fact that class choice in Path of Exile before did not ever lock you into any specific roles. This subclass system seems like a very bold design decision to make that differs largely from what Path of Exile used to be in the past. But I also see a lot of potential in this and to be honest I sometimes miss the clear distinction of classes other RPGs tend to have just a little bit while playing Path of Exile. And if this was any other company than GGG announcing these changes about their game I would be way more worried than I am right now. But as is I'm freaking hyped about all of this. And if you're hyped too and enjoyed the video subscribe for more content like this in the future. And if you want an overview about the upcoming patch in December click here. I am Yoji and I hope to see you soon.